Hi, Year 5. Welcome back. And look what I've learned to do. OK, well, let's get on with Lesson 2 of our topic, Crime and Punishment. Now, yesterday we looked at rules and um, where we find them and what they are and why we have them. Today, we're going to take that a little bit further and we're going to start to consider the rule of law. And why do we need it? Let's just think a minute. Just imagine walking to school, but there are no rules, no laws. That means no traffic lights, no speed limits. There's no left hand or right hand side for driving on. You could treat anyone however you wanted and they could treat you however they wanted back. How would it be? How would you feel? What do you think would happen? Yeah, it would be total chaos. People would get hurt, things would get damaged. It would be really, really unsafe. So we have a law, rule of law that all the people in this country and organizations um, have to follow. If you like, these are like a set of rules. And some of these laws are hundreds of years old. So let's have a look at this definition. Now, there's some things on there which we need to unpick, but let's read it through first. So the definition of the rule of law is that the principle that all people and organisations are subject to and accountable to law that is fairly applied and enforced. So basically, it means that the law is there for all of us, all people and all organisations, companies and groups, and that all of us fall under this law and we, our behaviour is accountable to this law. But this law must be fair to each one of us and it must be fairly enforced and by the police. It wouldn't be fair if the police let one person go for committing a crime and not another. So this is the principle of government by law. Basically, it really means that the law is there to protect us and to keep us safe. And it is all of our duty to obey the laws. Now, let me get rid of me and let's have a look here. So here is the Lady Justice and she is a common sight in legal institutions. That's the places that deal with the law and and have a look at the scales that she's holding. Now, can you see that they are balanced? They are in equilibrium. Why do you think that they are? Just take a minute to have a think. OK, well, perhaps another way to consider it is to have a look at this picture. What does it tell you about the law? Now, as you can see, you've got um, a row of sunflowers here arching over a line of people, people who are of different ages, different gender, different race. And look, it says everyone has the right to be protected by the law. So rather like the sunflowers, which are over each person, protecting it, if you like, we are also protected by the law. It is one of our rights. Now, as I said yesterday, if you're interested in learning more about your civil rights, then have a look on the home learning sheet and there's some links there for some further learning, should you wish. OK, so what um, happens, though, if you break the law? Now, I'm sure some of you already would say, well, they go to jail, um, especially if you played Monopoly like me. But actually, the law is there for all of us. But unfortunately, some people choose not to follow the law and they may carry out an action or behaviour which actually breaks the law. 
Um, and people who break the law, they must be held responsible for their actions. Committing a crime, breaking a criminal law has consequences. So, time to think. What are the different ways people can be punished for breaking the law? Make a little list now. Okay, so what did you come up with? I'm sure you came up with a prison sentence and maybe even the fine, but people are also given warnings and also some people may receive a curfew. Now, what does that mean? A curfew is basically when you restrict somebody's movements. You might be asking them to stay at home no, it's not locked down, um, between certain hours, often during the evening and night. So on to our main task today, Year 5. Um, if you could make a new law, what would it be? Now, every year, Parliament makes new laws and they also get rid of old laws that are no longer needed. Did you know that you used to not be allowed to eat a mince pie on Christmas Day? Well, that law has gone. Parliament voted to repel that law. So you can now eat your mince pies on Christmas Day. What I would like you to do is to create a proposed bill for a new law. Now, a proposed bill. Well, this is a description basically of what you would like the law to be. And then this bill is presented to Parliament for them to discuss and talk about it. In your bill, you will need to explain why you have decided on your law, as well as what rights and responsibility this law gives people. You may also like to add a consequence for not following the new law. Now, I don't mind you having a little bit of fun with this and being a little bit silly um, and coming up with something that wouldn't really happen. Equally, I know some of you have some amazing ideas about how we could make some change. Okay, so here is my example of um, a new law. Now I have typed mine up. You can type yours or handwrite yours. You need to decide on your law and um, write it like this. So my new law is, you must wear a helmet when you ride on a bike. Now the next paragraph is about why I've chosen this law a little bit more detail about what this law is going to do and also how it will make a difference to everybody's lives. So let's read. I have chosen this law because it will keep people safe and reduce the risk of serious injury to the cyclist if they had an accident and fell off a bike. So a sentence there to open it which explains what the law is and why I have chosen it briefly. Now I'm going to go into more detail about what's the point of wearing a helmet. So by wearing a helmet, the cyclists will protect their head from being fractured as they hit the ground or potentially a vehicle. And again, I'm going to go into more detail about what is special about a helmet, how it makes such a difference. So as a helmet is made from plastic coating with a foam layer inside, it will absorb the force as it hits an object, protecting the head and therefore protecting the brain. At the moment, it is a choice to wear. By making it a law, it means that everyone will have to wear one, which will mean less serious injuries in an event of an accident. So my final sentence just explains what difference this law will make to people's lives. Now, as we've discussed, we have rights and this law will mean that everybody will have an equal right to wear a helmet when they are on a bike. It is their right to do so. Equally, um, it is everybody's responsibility to ensure that they are wearing a helmet. So it is every person's responsibility to wear a bike helmet.
Now, here's a bit where you can make things up, but bear in mind the seriousness of the crime. So the consequence for breaking this law, I recommend that if you are caught riding a bike without a helmet, that you could be fined on the spot £50. I chose this amount because it reinforces how dangerous it is not to protect your head when riding a bike. So year five, I'd like you to follow that outline there, but obviously using your own ideas and using your own law, make sure you explain what your law is and why and the difference it's going to make. Make sure you explain what the right is, the responsibilities, and also add in the consequences for breaking this law. I hope you have fun with this year five, and I look forward to reading some of these new laws that you are going to propose.